you ever stop to kind of listen what your own mind is telling and those little voices especially what they're telling you are they supporting you or are they driving you to failure I would like to invite you today to a trip inside your mind, inside your own mind. Mr. Toastmaster, <coughs> fellow Toastmasters, and honored guests. I'm going to first start by sharing the story of how I started listening to those voices. I, didn't, I wasn't born really listening. I never paid attention to them until one day I was seeing my therapist. And yes, I have to admit, I had to see a therapist on my 20s my life was pretty messy. I didn't know what I wanted. <coughs> I didn't know where I was wanting to go. I didn't know who I was. So I had big questions to face and some little habits to change. So Isabel, I was so lucky too, as Kelmar, I was very, very lucky and I found Isabel. And Isabel was a wonderful therapist. She had a talent. And her talent was, she was that kind of person that with a few clicks, she would completely change your life forever. And that's exactly what she did for me. In this case, in this particular occasion that I'm gonna share tonight, she came to me and she kind of very seriously stopped me of my whole storytelling thing that I was going on. And she's like, Cecilia, do you realize that with friends like yourself, you don't need any enemies? <laughs> I was like shocked, a little like, oh, okay. <laughs> it took me a little bit to understand and process what she was referring to. And she was very kind and patient in pointing out all those situations where I was like, uh, I was saying the S word, I don't know if it's okay to repeat it here <laughs> to myself. You are like dumb, you're not going to make it. You're never going to speak like Bob Taylor. You're never going to do it like <laughs> Randy Powell. You're not good for that. It's too big a challenge for you. And all these constant things that I was telling myself. So after she pointed it out, I started noticing it in my daily life. And I started to see those voices. They're annoying voices because they're not very nice to me for some reason. <laughs> and I started to think, would I tell these to my best friend? Like, suppose I'm talking to my friend Carolina. Would I tell Carolina, oh, you're so dumb. <laughs> you never pass that text. <laughs> no, impossible. I cannot even imagine, even to someone that I don't like, I wouldn't talk like that. The way I was talking to myself, even someone that I'm not fond of, I would not talk to them that way. So it led me thinking, and it led me in a path of change. And I would like to take you in a little experiment. Let's imagine here a little scenario that I want to imagine each of you to imagine that you are speaker number three tonight, okay? And you're here at, at uh, Toastmasters meeting and the meeting is starting, but instead of paying attention to the meeting, you're having all these char in your mind, telling you little things. Are we getting there, yes? Mm -hmm. what, what, are things coming? You, the things you tell yourself are supportive or have you been there in that situation where you're waiting for a speech to start and all these people are saying all these super interesting things but you cannot even <laughs> focus because you have all these other charter, right? And let's imagine a little further that you do your speech but this didn't go exactly the way you planned it and it didn't come out the way you expected and it, it didn't turn out so well. You're not so happy with yourself after the speech and again, you know, all those thoughts starting again so, have you ever experienced, raise your hand if you've experienced that. Okay, uh, let's say Brian, for instance. Would you, the kind of things you tell yourself, imagine you are evaluating, let's say, Kalmar today. Would you ever yes. tell those things to yeah. Kalmar, the things you tell yourself after Can you speech? imagine that? <laughs> Kalmar was great today, so there's no reason. I can imagine <laughs> evaluating him. Uh, but no, I mean, you never would share the things that go through your head with someone else. Right. You would try to apply here when instructed specifically to apply the, 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 the sandwich method, right? So you would be really nice. And then you would make some comments on what things could improve and encourage developing those things. And then finally you still bring it to nice, right? And that's the kind of thing that we have to try to, that's the kind of dialogue we want to have with ourselves. So the more empowering thoughts that I can have before my speech is maybe I'm going to tell myself, even though I couldn't prepare this speech as much as I should have, I'm still going to love and understand myself. I'm going to accept myself for what I am today. 
Even though I'm not completely ready to do this speech, I'm going <coughs> to choose to remain calm and relaxed and self-confident. Yes? So that kind of mindset, I believe it's going to help us much better on our speech and we're going to get a better outcome. That's to hopefully. So my message basically today is be your best friend. Don't be your worst enemy. Okay? And try to control that chatter. Don't let the chatter control you. Because really, that chatter eventually is going to be either who you are or it's going to be on the way to the person you want to become. So it is very important that, and I invite you to experiment being your best friend. moments and provide some provide a sandwich for Cecilia there. Cecilia. Not much room for the whole sandwich is there, but the meat. <laughs> <laughs>